Today, uh, June 8th, 2004, and if we would all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Um, tonight, we do have several adjustments to the agenda. Um, under communications, reflections of the year by school board members, we will save that until the end. Um, and under unfinished business, we have um, an approval of a continuing contract nominee. And at the end, we have an executive session to discuss a legal matter. And following that, school board members only, uh, an executive <coughs> session for the superintendent search. The approval of May school board uh, minutes. Do we have a motion to accept those? Okay, Ann, in a second. Kathy, uh, any discussion? Okay, all approved. Six zero. Now we can move on to comments from our high school students. Rebecca and Michael. Good evening. Um, I haven't been in school for the last month or so, and the reason I match the color of my shirt is because I was at the beach today, which was fun. But um, the Student Advisory Council had their last meeting, and all the committees reported for the end of the year. And Mr. Ely also brought up a proposal for a new format for electing the SAC president, because we found that as um, our president, who was a senior, ended up kind of winding down his senior year, um, things winded down. And so the new idea might be to have a president who begins the second half of their junior year and then serves the first semester of their senior year and is then just advising the junior in their second semester who becomes president. So that might be a new plan for the SEC president. Um, then elections were held and um, I wasn't around for those, but I think those went well. And the last issue of the Keep Insight came out from the journalism class. The Bartleby was published and was on sale at the awards ceremony night, I believe. Um, the exams start tomorrow for everyone still at school. And the musical All American was performed. Uh, and that went very well. I think the audiences um, were very involved and the uh, performers enjoyed it. And then recently, Dr. Thunder the band made up of four seniors um, organized a concert in which they also had bands made up of underclassmen perform as well. And it seems that people who play musical instruments outside of the school band have really gotten a chance to play. And the students, it was very well attended. So it was kind of fun to see people um, outside of school going to a concert that was pretty much generated because of students. Um, and then in terms of the seniors, we presented our uh, senior transition projects and um, those were a really great opportunity and uh, I think that it was important to have us go back to the school and then show people what we'd done. And I think that maybe a little bit more time for that would have been nice because I think that some people really did have a lot to share. Um, then we had our senior celebration. Um, we had a really busy week and uh, we had scholarships given out that night and there were a few speakers. And then um, a new thing this year was a faculty tea um, after school last mm, Wednesday, I think. Uh, the faculty came and um, a few students spoke about the faculty members and Ms. Moriarty and Ms. McNulty gave speeches as well, which it was really good because in the last minute rush of the week before seniors leave for their transition projects, the students who've been with teachers for four years really don't get a proper chance to say goodbye. So 
the tea was a nice way of doing that. And then we had our graduation on Sunday and 112 of us graduated. And uh, we were all really relieved to have it at Fort Williams and really excited to be in such a beautiful place. And we wanna thank the community for coming and also supporting us that night. Project graduation, the buses went off along 77 and we had a really wonderful send off people waving signs and everything as if we were kind of going off into the world. And our project graduation was called The Last Blast. And we had a great time. And we'd also like to thank the community for the gift certificates and things and all the planning that went into that from parents. And uh, lastly, I'd like to thank the school board. And I've really enjoyed speaking in front of you all. And tonight, I'm actually doing free without an actual speech, it's just notes, because I feel so comfortable <laughs> with you all. <laughs> and I wish the board luck um, dealing with the budget issues and the property tax for school spending and new members, and it's very exciting. And today I was at the lacrosse game and I was looking around and um, really happy that this is a place I can call home and that so many of the people who have, who've already graduated were back at the game. So it was really reassuring to know that it's not a chapter in a book being closed off, but rather it's kind of a continuing thing and I'll still get to come back next year. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. I, had a, mm -hmm. I, just, wondered, oh, I just wondered, Rebecca, what, what was the format for um, seniors presenting their STPs? Um, the seniors, there were five in a room and we basically had about 10 minutes to just explain what we've done and give any advice that we had for underclassmen planning their STPs. But it wasn't with people that we had been with before. It wasn't in our roundtable groups. To me, it seemed as if it was a seemingly random group of people. And it would, um, yeah. it would have been nice, I think, to have a little bit more time just to set up the presentations and things. It was right at 7.30 in the morning. And the seniors, I don't know how <laughs> awake and involved they were. That. Was were the presentations taped? No, but there were presentations given here that were taped. I think four or five example SCPs. Oh, Rebecca did a fine job of summing it up, so I don't really have that much to do. Um, like Rebecca, I've really been at school for the last four weeks, and so instead of talking about how fun marching practice was, which was a blast, um, I'd just like to say some thank yous. Uh, I'd like to thank you to the general capabilities of the community uh, for helping me and shaping me into the person I am. I'd like to thank the Cables Beth School System for educating me above and beyond what is required by the No Child Left Behind Act. I'd like to thank all the parents who volunteered their time to help and fundraise and organize activities. Without you, many of these activities would not be possible. Um, I'd, finally, I'd like, on behalf of the class of 2004, I would like to thank the parents of 2004 for putting up with your children for 12 years. Now that they're gone, you should have some fun. And I'd like to thank our two retiring teachers, uh, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Greeley, for being super, uh, superb teachers. I had both of them, and I really enjoyed them. That's all. Okay. Any questions or comments for Michael? Okay, well, thank you both, Rebecca and Michael, for um, reporting to us all year long. And we've certainly appreciated you taking the time and pulling all your information together and prepare it for us. Thank you. And now the um, middle school, Kevin and Nora. Oh, Nora. <laughs> As the end of school comes closer, more activities are squeezed in. Last Friday, the middle school sent a team to Relay for Life. That team raised $2,600 for the American Cancer Society. All this week, the fifth graders will be taking trips on uh, a sailboat called the Bagheera. Seventh graders voted for the Caper Award on Thursday. Step Up Day is on Friday. Um, Beach Day is on Monday. Fifth graders are going to Crescent. 6th and 7th Scarborough, and 8th is going to Old Orchard. On Tuesday, there will be award ceremonies for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And I really enjoyed speaking for the school board, so thank you. Any questions? 
Okay, and thank you too, Nora. You've been well prepared every single time you've come to our meeting and we appreciate it. Um, and now we will skip down to comments from the public and I don't think we have any tonight, do we? Um, and we'll move on to recognition. The first item on recognition is, is at this meeting each year we um, recognize um, at least by reading a list of names of the teachers for years of service. In the fall, um, at the opening um, convocation, um, these teachers whose names will be read this evening will receive a small token of appreciation from the school department um, for either 5, 10, uh, 15, 20, 25, or 30 years of service. Um, and this year the, the, the list is a bit longer, so um, bear with me, but I would like to, as we usually do, read them into the record. Uh, for five years of service in Cape Elizabeth, uh, Maureen Bergeron, uh, Douglas Sharmut, Elizabeth Fagan, Joseph Gilkey, Peter Guitard, Rachel Guthrie, Andrea Hayden, Kimberly Huckel, Jason Lund, Joan Moriarty, Mark Pendarvis, Cameron Rosenblum, Lydia Schilt, Joel Schroeder, Christopher Welch, and Matthew Whaley. For 10 years of service, uh, Linda Alfiero, Catherine Clough, Dwight Ely, Tony Gidoni, Cheryl Higgins, Marcia McDonald, Jamie Michaud, Steve Price, Ben Raymond, Tom Robinson, Deborah Sampson, Sally Tamaro, Christine Trahan, Bernie Shannon, and for 15 years of service, Elaine Brownell, Paul Casey, Janet Favor, Michelle Gagney, Sherry Gower, Suzanne Janelle, Sue King, Sarah Lewis, Ralph McLean, Gary Record, Shari Robinson, Gail Schmader, Mary Smaha, Susie Van Wyne. And for 20 years of service, David Brown, Lynn Evans, Kelly Hassan, Andy Strout, Charlotte Musrell. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm 25 years of service. The list does get shorter. Uh, Charlotte Musrell, Linda Nickerson, Pam Vos, Dick Witten, and 30 years, um, Hayden Atwood, Gary Lenoy, Rick Madden and Julie Salikas. Some of those names at the upper end also will be recognized this evening as um, retirees. Okay. And we would like to also um, recognize our student representatives to the school board. Um, Rebecca Taylor. Yeah, we're going to have a Oh, there's still, yes, we're going to go down to the podium and have something for them, but okay. I just thought you could read the names of the people who participated in the... I'm sorry. Okay. We had, during the um, interviews for the superintendent search, we had students both from the middle school and the high school um, who helped and guided the superintendents around on a tour through the schools um, and visited with teachers and so on. And we would like to recognize from the middle school Carly Riker, Jonathan Bass, Caitlin Hurley, Lynn Tarbox, Elizabeth Brewington. And from the high school, um, Ali Melsack, Melsack, Christina Contras, Beth Roy, Christine Babick, Aaron Maloney, Chelsea Pizer, Alexa Emerson, Spencer Scott, Brad Miklovic, Chelsea Koch, and Jacob Metzger. And for um, each of those students, um, we have a um, small token of our appreciation, um, a gift certificate from Starbucks, which we will hand over to Jeff and to uh, Nancy to distribute to those students, if you would, please. And now we can move down to the... Reporting. We have two other items for, actually three items for recognition, and we have some presentations to make this evening. Okay.
as um, Marie had said, we have been very fortunate this year, I think, to have some outstanding student representatives to the school board, um, and I think did an excellent job with their reports um, each month, and, I, and they need to know how much their time that they take uh, to come and speak to the school board is appreciated, and it's nice to have a student's perspective. So we do have a small token of appreciation uh, for each one of them, and I know Kevin Johnson I, is not here this evening, um, but from the middle school, uh, Nora Daly. And from the high school, Rebecca Taylor and Michael Iris. And also, um, we started, uh, I think, two or three years ago, um, recognizing um, teachers that are retiring um, from the district. And I know that within their own ranks and their association, they do have um, uh, some recognition that they do on behalf of um, their own uh, peers. Um, but we felt it was important that the school board take some time and um, offer some recognition to those retiring teachers uh, here at a school board meeting in somewhat of a, of a, of a formal presentation. Um, and at the end of that, um, we have also, we'll be recognizing um, a couple of school board members who will be leaving. Um, and then we're gonna take a few minutes. As you can see, we have some punch and some refreshments. Um, we'll take about a 10 to 15 minute uh, recess just to uh, have, give people time to, to talk a little bit before we come back to the meeting. So our first um, person that we would like to recognize um, as a retiring teacher uh, from the high school, uh, Ray Cooper. For anyone who would like to say anything, um, that option is open to you also. Um, from uh, Pond Cove School, Lynn Evans. School, Jill Bell. Thank you. I promise you all these papers aren't a long speech, but it takes a lot to make a wonderful teaching experience. One of those things is the students, I've had the best students um, during my almost 11 years here, 12 years here. It takes the parents. I've had wonderful parents, very supportive. Um, my colleagues, especially the grade level. Um, matter of fact, you just took me out to dinner tonight. My teaching partners this past year, Allison Hawks, who's been absolutely a wonderful friend and a great support. It takes administrators. I've had the best. At Pond Cove School, I had Tom, um, who was always looking for new ideas. This year, Nancy Hutton, whose attitude is, no matter what it is, even if it's difficult, we can find a way to do it. <laughs> and a wonderful superintendent, and uh, we've had Tom, and very sad to see Tom go, um, because we all feel he's had great vision and um, really has brought our community a long way. Um, last in the community, um, we have the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. They've supported me in my project, many other teachers as well, and I think they're a wonderful organization. And then we have the school board, all of you. Um, you've made the teaching environment incredible, so positive, and I want to thank you all for that. It's really made a difference in my teaching career here. Thanks.
And again from the middle school, Beverly Bisbee. Pine Cove School, Linda Nickerson. Um, I don't know if all of you know this, but I started Pine Cove as a five-year-old in kindergarten, so I've come through um, all the way through the system, and it's been a privilege to work um, as an adult for this system and to grow up in this town and to have my children in this town with such committed teachers, school board, parents, community members, and um, it's very bittersweet for me, but I'm going to spend some time doing some things that I've thought about for a long time. And I know, I don't think Daddy Anderson is, is here this evening, but Daddy is also retiring from uh, Pine Cove School. Um, so I'd like to thank you, Marie, and you can go sit down. Oh. And um, since Marie is, will be a recipient of a, a token of appreciation, um, to assist with this, I'd like to call on Vice Chair um, Kevin Sweeney and Senior Board Member to come down and, and help with the uh, presentations to school board members. We have two uh, school board members who will be leaving the board, and, and both of, of these, these members um, have been on the board um, and bear some responsibility for bringing me here. Um, so I really feel a uh, uh, special allegiance to, to both Jennifer and Marie, and, and uh, on the personal side, I want to thank them for all their support over the last five years. Um, it's because of your efforts and the rest of the school board, I think, that we've made the progress that we have in Cape Elizabeth. And uh, you need to know that uh, your hard work uh, is, is certainly appreciated. Um, so to recognize you, we do have uh, a token of appreciation. And I'd like to first call down Jennifer. Yeah, we got the right one. <laughs> yeah. That would be. Thank you. I'll catch up to you later. And um, Marie Prager, who has been chair for the last two years of her stay on a school board. years on the school board have been very rewarding, challenging, and at times frustrating. I have enjoyed the relationships with other board members, and we have all dedicated a great amount of time to the responsibilities of the board. I have enjoyed, enjoyed working closely with the superintendent, the administrators, teachers, and the students. Throughout all of the issues that arise each day, it really does come down to the kids and whether or not we are doing the right things for them. We have, oh, God, fine. <laughs> we have a wonderful school system with very qualified and dedicated people who are always striving to achieve the very best. They will always, they, there will always be differences of opinion and controversy but I hope the interest of the kids will remain in every decision the school board makes. I am leaving knowing that there are very dedicated and qualified people who want a chance to do something for their community, just as I did a few years ago. I will truly miss my involvement on the board and the people I have come to know so well. Thank you. And, um, 
Um, are you finished? Yes, okay. I'm waiting for the punch. No, you Okay, well, no, we're not finished. We're not finished. Um, I have one last acknowledgement um, for the evening. The school board would like to recognize the commitment and dedication that Dr. Frisella has brought to our community for the fa past five years. He has guided us through exciting and challenging times and has worked with the school board and his administrators to build a team with professionalism and integrity. Through his leadership, we have a future direction plan in place done in collaboration with all stakeholders in the school community. He will definitely leave a mark on this community for his leadership, vision, management style, and commitment and dedication to the students. I would like to present this plaque on behalf of the school board um, to Tom, and I would like to read what it says. Um, in recognition and appreciation of your leadership, 1999 to 2004, Thomas A. Frisella, your vision has provided a future direction for the Cape Elizabeth schools. Your management style has been, in, has been instrumental in attaining, attracting and retaining a quality staff. Your commitment to improving academic style, standards has allowed Cape Elizabeth to continue its position of excellence, the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been an interesting five years. I, I can't say I was ever bored for a minute. Um, the, the time that, that, that I think that I put into this job has, has been worthwhile. Um, and I think um, overall, um, without the commitment of the school board, and I think you all should know, and, I'll, and when I do my end of the year report, um, that Cape Elizabeth um, uh, has had in place um, one of the most outstanding school boards uh, in New England and were so recognized um, a year ago um, as being selected one of the top five school boards in New England. Um, and I think the reason for that was the relationship, and as there was a recent article in the National School Board Journal um, that, that talked about those school boards and the reason they were recognized and Cape Elizabeth was the only one from Maine that was recognized, was the relationship they were able to establish with uh, their superintendent, um, with the administrators, and the vision that they had for the school district. Um, so and no superintendent um, can do very much without the, the support of a school board and the administrative team. And that just filters down to the staff. And I think you know, by all of us working together over the last five years, we have been able to accomplish quite a bit. Um, and it really, truly has been a team effort, and I want to thank everyone for allowing me to do that. So. Before we do that, Tom. Okay. My turn. No. <laughs> you guys can have a seat. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Tom, you don't want to leave this. I may take it. I assume a prerogative tonight, I usually don't. Tonight is the last time the members of this board and our superintendent will come together in a regularly scheduled meeting. After five, six, and six and a half years, respectively, three of us will move on to new challenges and opportunities. I am sure that others here tonight will lavish Marie, Jen, and Tom with praise for their achievements and contributions to the schools and community at large. Done appropriately, this will indeed be a long evening. It seems like only yesterday that we came together, a diverse group of individuals with our own backgrounds, life experiences, education, careers, opinions, and agendas. It seems like ages since we came together, a group united in our individual determination 
to advocate for public education in Cape Elizabeth. The casual observer of a school board business meeting may conclude, somewhat reasonably, that we generally march in lockstep. The involved observer would know that the real work occurs at the public workshops, public committee meetings, and public hearings. Our debates and disagreements, while very real, were always tempered by a single common question, what's good for the students? Considerably more often than not, in answering this question, we have been able to achieve honest, respectful compromise and reach consensus in meeting the needs of all students. This has been a particularly difficult and often painful year for most of us, but a recitation of those issues serves no good purpose. Better for us to celebrate the many victories that are overlooked, unacknowledged, or taken for granted. Those were the result of the trust and teamwork that personified this board. As this board disbands and a new board begins, I have a few short and personal comments from Marie, Jen, and Tom. You always place the needs of the students first. Through argument and agreement, you never strayed from that overarching principle. And you did so with a passion, determination, and invention that overcame so many roadblocks. Excuse me. While none of us are perfect, you have done far more good than your critics are willing to acknowledge. You three, and others who remain, are my trusted colleagues and partners. As I look forward to our new board, a new superintendent, and a new year, I will miss each of you, and I will miss all of you. Peace and plenty to you and yours. Thank you. We'll have a 10 minute recess. And we have punch and snacks, I guess. continue with our superintendent's report for the evening, I would just like to announce that um, Henry Adams has just been elected to um, the school board and he has already been sworn in and so he will sit here for the balance of our meeting. He will be part of our school board. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, and now we can have the superintendent's report, Tom. Um, what I'd like to do is to take a few minutes um, in what I'm calling an end of the year uh, status report. Um, and I, for the school board members, I don't know if Henry, you received one of these. Just to go over um, as we close out this school year, uh, and look to the future. Some of the initiatives that have taken place, uh, some of the things we need to look to, to the future, and from my perspective, um, some of the issues that, um, that at least from, that I see as, as some strengths and some issues that, that probably still need some, some attention. Obviously, the first issue um, is the building projects. Um, 
The status right now of the Pond Cove project is that the bid has been awarded to Lankford and Lowe. They were the low bidder. Um, the bid was right on target. We felt very good about the bids because they were all uh, very close, which really says a lot about um, the estimates that were done for the project. And with this uh, climate that we're in right now, as far as the cost of materials, we're, I think, uh, in good shape that Pond Cove and the low bidder that came in um, was within the, the, the funds allotted for the project. We also, the other piece of good news with Pond Cove was that we received uh, $200,000 uh, from the revolving renovation fund from the state and an interest-free loan from the state. So that really helps us as far as that project's concerned, um, just in case there are any of those overruns or anything that might happen in that project. Uh, we look like we're in, in very good shape um, as far as Pond Cove. The high school renovation project, um, we have hired a construction manager in Peyton Construction. Um, our initial estimates um, right now um, are a bit over um, the projected money uh, that, that the voters approved at the referendum. And right now the building committee is, <laughs> along with the architect and Peyton Construction, will be taking a look at what kinds of things might be at alternates, uh, take a look at value engineering pieces of the project, uh, to see if we can get some of those costs down. Um, we've had, in the last six months, um, in, the, in that area, there have been some huge increases in prices as far as steel, and obviously anything that uses oil um, to manufacture. Uh, management of the projects. As the school board knows, we've been having some discussions about how these projects are going to be managed, uh, just so that you are aware. Um, the superintendent, business manager, facilities manager, um, you know, um, would be the, the point people on the project. Um, we've had um, discussions about an owner's representative. You do have a clerk of the works um, you, that's working with the architect. And there also will be, um, you know, the, the whole notion of construction management is a collaborative venture, and that's one of the reasons we went into the construction management. Um, instead of a, um, a bid, design bid process um, is to kind of create a collaborative process for the building project. Um, there still are discussions going on whether or not uh, an owner's representative, whether or not you feel you can afford that because it could be quite costly and you'd hate to, um, at least in my view, eliminate portions of the project as it is right now over. Um, to hire someone to help um, run that project. And also, I'd like the school board to be aware that if changes are necessary, um, anything that changes the scope of the project, the school board does have the final say on that. There probably will be recommendations from the building committee, but if things like, you know, whether it's auditorium seats, whether it's redoing of a field, whether it's the cafeteria addition, whether if there are portions of that project that are that are discussed and that are recommended, um, they only can be recommendations from the building committee and the, those recommendations will have to come to the school board as the school board is, is the owner in, in a sense in this project and has to make the final decision um, to any changes in the scope of the project. Future direction planning. Um, that future direction plan has guided the district over the last several years. Um, the mission, the vision has been well uh, accepted by the school community and there is a real awareness in the, in the general community about the Future Direction Plan. This August we had a large-scale workshop where we, as a result of that, created a new strategic goal, revised objectives, and next year there will be a need to create the specific action plans for the new strategic goal and any of the updated objectives. So that will be something uh, that will have to happen next year and the hope is that that plan can be bumped out um, once the new strategic goal is in place with the action plans, um, probably until 2009 is what the, the plan would be. It is something though that needs to be revisited. Um, we were three years into the plan and we revisited it, uh, brought the entire staff together. I don't think you'd want to go longer than three years without um, uh, some, at least some discussions throughout the entire district 
at that meeting for those of you that aren't aware we had community leaders involved in that process town councillors were invited to it the chief of police fire chief it was really a process that included representatives from the entire community parents the entire teaching staff administrators and the school board so I think there was a lot of value in in bringing everyone into the process rather than just a small select group to make decisions about the future of the district the other piece I'd like to mention about the future direction plan is the importance of the school board I've seen other districts that have long-range plans have strategic plans and they they sit on the shelf and get dusty and and no one really knows what what they're supposed to do with them until there's a an argument about something and someone drags out the strategic plan why this plan has worked is because we use it all the time when the school board creates their budget there's always a question about what does our future direction plan say what is the mission and vision of our future direction plan in the school district what does the plan say about professional development what does it say about curriculum and if you look at a lot of the major initiatives that have gone on in the district over the last several years they are all a direct result of action plans that were part of our future direction plan whether it be the hiring procedures that we put in place the curriculum work that's happening the professional development activities all of that came out of that plan so it was always something we could go back to take a look at and really helped us focus from one year to the next like to mention something about the main state learning results we hear about this all the time and we're still working on the requirements of the main state learning results and I also in talking about that on the next item and no child left behind would like to differentiate between main state learning results requirements and no child left behind I'm our local assessment system that we've been working on diligently for the last several years is part of that that the main state learning results and the need to have a local assessment system in place it's it's labor intensive there's a real need for professional time for teachers to create the assessments in short if you're in a student in a third grade class what the local assessment system will do is to provide an assessment of our own curriculum so that we look at all of our students in that particular third grade let's say in mathematics so that we will know that regardless of the teacher or the techniques that that particular teacher uses in that classroom they're all learning the same material and hopefully at the end we'll we'll all come out with with similar a similar knowledge base regardless of who you have for teacher what classroom in there's a real relationship to technology at least in this district and we've made an effort through the efforts of a lot of people especially Gary Lenoy and Sarah Simmons to to use technology and the teachers in their work with the local assessment system have been documenting curriculum and doing that kind of work using the the computer so there were our hope is to have all of that data on a computer because at some point we have to send that information in some form to the, the the State Department of Education what they're going to do with it I don't know but it is a requirement of the law so that I think it's a good thing to get everything documented and on computer so that we can have access to the data also part of that whole it we've heard a lot about the chapter 127 graduation requirement in order to do that we need supports for our students because students in the future will need to meet certain standards in order to earn a high school diploma things like and I listed here the learning center at the high school as an example which wasn't we were not able to get into the budget this year but that kind of an initiative that would really help some of those students who are struggling to meet those standards are extremely important in the future to meet the needs of all of our students the middle school in Pond Cove have worked very hard at putting in some support mechanisms with support teachers in each one of those buildings and I think we'll we'll gain from that because it isn't just what happens and the 11th or 12th grade 
it's the work that when the students first come into school and what kind of supports are there not just for special needs students but for all the students um, that are in place early on in their education that will help us in the future and that's, I know those will be budget issues that come up and they are issues that will need that need support in order for all of our students to meet those standards no child left behind on the other hand um, I don't know I guess is a bureaucratic nightmare um, <laughs> it's just um, what we've been going through with no child left behind um, I think is really tested um, our patients in the schools I know our administrators have had some interesting meetings about it we're now in the middle of looking at what highly qualified staff means and what teachers have to do in going through files and looking at coursework what a failing school is and we found this year that that it, it, you could be a failing school if 94 percent rather than 95 percent of the students uh, took the MEA um, luckily we didn't fall into any of those categories but there are a lot of different um, pieces of no child left behind uh, that are really causing some problems for schools uh, my own personal feeling it was a law that was designed for urban schools and doesn't work um, that well in places in places like Maine um, one of the, the big differences you'll see right away with no child left behind is the testing um, there will be testing in grades three through eight the MEA as you know now are is, is given in grades four eight and eleven there will be additional testing of a, of a shorter MEA in those off years um, so what that's done in many cases it'll give us some, some data and I guess it will be meaningful um, but I question whether testing you know testing for what purpose if it's just to rank and sort I don't know if that makes a lot of sense or if we're going to use the test results um, to improve instruction and um, to assess where we are and then and if those tests make a difference then that would probably be a, a reasonable thing to look at I'm not quite sure yet whether whether these tests will do that um, and then and one of the things that obviously is a bugaboo with no child left behind there's just a lack of federal financial support to implement the law um, it's, it's another law that's been put in that's that's taken an unusual amount of time uh, staff time uh, to implement and uh, without the the financial support from the federal government to, to make it work on the plus side Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation um, this group is is gaining momentum um, my hope is that the foundation will not be used um, to supplant funds that should be raised uh, locally as part of our regular program because the the whole um, when the foundation was originated uh, several years ago it was about innovation it was about creating change positive change in schools and what they can do to support the mission and vision of the Cape Elizabeth schools um, it's not their responsibility to take care of the regular operating budget um, they are prepared though and they've had discussions if what ifs what if Pulaski passes um, will that role of the foundation change uh, fortunately we have a, an active group of um, people that are involved with the foundation and they're willing to help in any way they can um, as you as you know they've uh, come up with the funds uh, to pay for half of the the laptop initiative next year so that Cape Elizabeth can move forward with that um, and we still have as of this morning no word and I guess it's as far as we know and talking to Gary Lenoy today it's dead at the state level and says something happens that, that we're not aware of um, but it was the foundation that came up to the plate and said we want to make this work we think it's a good thing for kids in our schools it's innovative it's creative we will support that they are also looking at system systematic changes and rather than just do classroom grants they would like to really take a look at what the needs of the district are as a system and support those needs um, in a little bit different direction um, they will be getting a capital campaign in the fall in the hopes of, of raising one to two million dollars to serve as an endowment for the Cape Elizabeth schools and through the investments of, the, of that endowment they would be able to, to realize some funds that would support um, some of those innovative initiatives in the schools as far as curriculum and assessment is concerned it's really been an emphasis for the last three years anyway 
One of our goals of our future direction plan was to have a K-12 coordinated, uh, implemented and evaluated curriculum. Um, that's moving ahead through the efforts of the entire staff, uh, administrators, uh, and Sarah Simmons, who's leading that with um, her team that she's created, the uh, CIA, uh, Curriculum Instruction and Assessment Team, and they've worked very hard, a group of teachers who are volunteering their time um, to help push this initiative forward. Um, this, again, is another result of our Future Direction Plan, also with a little impetus from the Maine State Learning Results. One of the problems that we constantly run into is the time needed uh, to create assessments, the time needed by staff to do the curriculum work. It isn't something that can be done to you. Staff need and teachers need to participate. And um, as we're all too aware, uh, the teacher's day is pretty well scheduled with taking care of kids. Um, and unfortunately, we don't give enough time and effort to the, the things that we need to do in the area of professional development. Because when you, when you talk about curriculum and you talk about assessments, that conversation goes to instruction. Um, and you need uh, teacher collaboration time. If you really want to do, do it right, um, curriculum, instruction, assessment all go hand in hand and it has to be one, one system. Um, and that's the, probably the next big initiative we'll be talking about, or you'll be talking about in, in, term of, in terms of what the school needs to do. And I think it'll be that focus on instruction and how do we implement that curriculum that we've spent so much time in creating. The lab, just a few words on the laptop initiative. Um, I would like to recognize the middle school. Um, they really set an example. Um, and I think because of what's happened at the middle school and how Cape Elizabeth Middle School has been a model as far as the laptop initiative for the, for the rest of the state, I think it will make it that much easier as those laptops move on to the high school. Um, the teachers at the middle school gave a lot of time above and beyond the call of duty to make that initiative work. And I think because of that, we have a good foundation and those kids um, that are going on to the high school really know how to use those laptops as a learning, true learning tool. The leadership in this and the support is crucial and the school board has been, I just, I'm very supportive of and aware of what the laptop initiative is and I've witnessed firsthand, many of you, the kinds of things that can happen as we use technology in the schools today. Um, that isn't to say that as it goes into the high school, we have to make sure that we have those supports. Um, just the, 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 the support of the technology and fixing the things that break, making sure that everything's up and running. Unfortunately, when you have 300, 450 pieces of equipment, um, sometimes it, the, the, the equipment breaks and it's not going to do us any good if, if everything isn't up and running. Um, for our classroom. So that's something that will constantly, we will need to, you will need to address as you move into the future with the high school and if all four grades are, have, have laptops um, used at that level. I mentioned the Pulaski proposal. Um, it's a huge, if, if the Pulaski proposal as I see it passes, it'll be a huge financial problem for our schools. Um, I, the task force that's been created in the town, I think, does, is, is really moving in, in the right direction to educate the community uh, about what the impact of the Pulaski proposal will be. Um, when I read things in the paper, um, and of course everything you read in the paper isn't always accurate, um, <laughs> but um, when I read things like the main mall will save a million dollars a year in taxes, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, why that needs to happen and how that's going to benefit um, uh, the local taxpayer in, in, in communities like Cape Elizabeth. Um, but maybe I need to be educated. I do know that if, if that does pass and the sums of money that are lost um, are really going to have an impact on schools, much to the tune of what happened in California with Proposition 13 in Massachusetts, as I experienced firsthand with Proposition 2.5. When, if and when it ever did happen, I think the school board obviously um, is going to have some, some very difficult decisions to make about what the priority is. As a, as a district leadership team, when we discussed this, the district leadership team felt that the focus of whatever we do has to be on, on the students, um, has to be what happens in classrooms, and whatever we have to do to save 
the classrooms would be the highest priority and that means maintaining class size as it is and whatever we have to do any outside of that in pairing away parts of the program so be it but try to impact student learning as little as possible budget issues obviously budgets are never easy I would like to say that that there are some concerns the average expense increases in Cape Elizabeth are the lowest in the county over the last six years the Cape Elizabeth schools budget has gone up an average of 3.6 percent which is the lowest in Cumberland County our per pupil expenditure in Cape Elizabeth we rank 116 of 261 towns in Maine we rank nine out of the 12 Cumberland County communities what concerns me even more is this has dropped every year for the last 10 years um, not that we need to be number one but 10 years ago we were number two in Cumberland, Cumberland County and number 18 in the state um, so we've dropped a hundred places uh, in the state of Maine and we've dropped significantly in Cumberland County as far as what we are spending per student in our schools and and for those of you that have reviewed the data sheet that we put out at the budget time um, regardless of how you mix it even if you take out um, what the state supports for the schools even if you just put in the budget in the comparisons what each community actually spends or raises in taxes we still rank very low which tells me that the financial effort um, that Cape Elizabeth extends towards its schools on the expense side of the budget is not on a par with the communities like us in the area as far as professional development I think we've made some great strides in professional development when we negotiated a teacher contract I think four years ago now uh, we added five days to the teacher work year um, and I think that that really has helped um, with the professional development that's needed it has helped with instruction it's created a feeling of collaboration um, but I still think there's more to do because professional development is not seen as part of the work day um, and, and I guess it's the way our public schools are designed that unless a teacher is standing in front of a group of 20 kids people don't think they're working um, and in other parts of the world um, a significant portion up to 50 percent of a teacher's day is spent collaborating talking to parents uh, developing lessons um, all those kinds of things that are important to student learning um, are a huge part of the day um, we're working we have been working uh, to make that more a part of the workday uh, the high school um, two years ago was able to design a collaborative time uh, within their day for teachers which I think has really been a benefit um, the middle school this year and Pond Cove um, are going to utilize some late start days that is not the best way to do it it's the most it's the cheapest way to do it um, but it does impact student time um, to do it any other way obviously would be expensive because it would mean additional staff um, but I th really think if you really are serious about improving instruction then professional development needs to be utilized in a different way than it is right now enrollment always comes up at budget time it's a moving target and for whatever reason in Cape Elizabeth it's been going up um, I think we have to to realize that that caseloads from teachers if they get too large we don't know the kids very well anymore so that as teachers work with with students um, if you have 110 kids you're not going to know those kids um, and that enrollment issues are extremely important you need to know that Pond Cove for example is an extremely large elementary school um, most of the research will tell you that the ideal size for an elementary school is anywhere from 303 to 350 students I know in the district that I'm going to in Connecticut we have three elementary schools in my district each with three to 350 students each one of those elementary schools has its own full-time art teacher full-time music teacher full-time PE teacher Pond Cove um, is twice the size of any of those schools and only has the one art teacher the one music teacher um, the middle school is a large is a, is a large facility um, and they don't have the allied arts support uh, to do the kinds of things with with one art teacher at the middle school one music teacher the same kinds of issues that they have at Pond Cove I think at some point need to be addressed 
staffing needs. Um, and I've mentioned some of these about class size as a direct relationship to learning. Um, we need collaborative time for teachers. Uh, the, the whole enrollment issue and the adequate um, electives that are available at the high school or allied arts at the other level. We've talked continuously over the last several years about health instruction. Um, it's part of our five-year staffing plan. Um, there definitely is a need for a nurse in each building because of the, the, the type of, of student that we're seeing now and some of the health needs that they have. Um, nurses are doing things today that they never did before. Uh, and the requirements of, of a nurse in a school today are much different and than they were years ago. And each, each building um, could justify the need for a nurse at each level. Um, the future direction plan, um, if you remember the implementation that we had in the five-year staffing plan, um, we have talked about the need uh, for professional development assistance and how do we deal with professional development curriculum work at each building. Um, Pine Cove came up with an innovative kind of a way to deal with that in the teacher leader, but there were some sacrifices. It was done without any additional cost and actually was a cost savings, although that wasn't the intent. Um, the fear is that we're going to just reassign people rather than address all of, all of the issues because all that other work still needs to be done. Um, so that, that, re, that future direction plan uh, initiative regarding staffing or how do you deal with professional development and curriculum work at each building is still real and needs to be addressed. I think the teacher leadership opportunities are wonderful. And if teachers can start doing things differently and we take a look at teachers as leaders, that will probably help. Um, and you need to know that Cape Elizabeth does have a bare bones staff. Um, the reason that our per pupil expenditure is lower than most communities is that we have less staff than most communities. Um, we don't have the number of teachers in the special areas such as art, music, um, and uh, elective areas that most communities have. Um, our act academic program, we do very well, and our class sizes are on a par with other communities, but we don't have a lot of those other kinds of positions that you see in other communities. Just quickly on Project Blueprint, um, this is the consortium that was started a year ago, officially, um, that we've been working with um, uh, Wayland, Massachusetts, uh, Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, uh, Palisades, Pennsylvania, uh, Clayton, Missouri, and Edina, Minnesota. Uh, all uh, suburbs of major uh, metropolitan areas, very high performing schools. Um, we're, we're part of, I think, a great initiative that really will force new and creative thinking. Um, this group is always looking at moving forward because if you're not moving forward, you're moving backward. Um, and, I, and it's really an opportunity for us to look outside of Maine. And Cape Elizabeth will continue to be part of this. Um, um, but you do have working with you some of the, the top school districts in the country. Uh, and there is a fall meeting planned in November. Now lastly, as I wrap up, I just wanted to, to, to touch on some of what I think some of the strengths are over the last five years. And as I thought about these, um, um, there's only, there are only four items that I've included on this list, and then I've, I have a, a few items that I think need attention. But I think one of the strengths that we've had in, in this school <coughs> district is, is leadership. And leadership in terms of, um, right from the school board, the administrative team that we have working together, which we call our district leadership team, um, and as I mentioned in my remarks at the podium, that um, in 2002, 2003, this school board was recognized as one of the five most outstanding school boards in New England. Um, and I, that's quite a recognition. And I, the, the group that, that went based, um, the New England School Development Council, based out of Harvard, took a look at um, what kinds of things, um, and they did a lot of research on what um, good school boards have and what kinds of districts do they come from, and what kinds of relationships are there. And what they found is that in Cape Elizabeth, we had strong relationships with the school board, administrators, and the superintendent. And that is really a, a true leadership team. And some of the gains that we've made in a lot of the initiatives over the last several years, I think are a direct result of everyone being on the same page, um, the school board, uh, the administrators and the superintendent all moving with a common focus in the same direction. 
another strength that i think we have as a district is our long range planning initiative that we focus it on student learning and achievement we have an agreed upon mission vision and beliefs this is really helped us as we as we focus on different kinds of issues that come up it keeps us moving that direction as we plan all of our goals at the beginning of each school year another strength that that we that we're very fortunate in this community is the support that's there um, the community supports the schools um, you know it's kind of interesting that i'll say that in one hand but then i see that the expenses um, haven't gone up in the schools but i think the community as a whole um, you know as seen by the three to one support of the, a local project in a referendum um, it was a real good sign for the schools. The fact that there are, I don't know the exact number, but there has to be 75 to 100 people actively working on a Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, which is, which is in support of the mission and vision of the schools. And the number of people that we have uh, working in booster organizations is truly amazing in this community. I think the last thing that I see as a real strength is the staff. We have a staff that's, that's truly committed they work extremely hard, and we have a high-quality group of people that are working for us. Um, and, uh, and, and that's an easy thing to say, but as I compare the kinds of people we have working here and to other places that I know that I've been, um, I really see a high level of commitment, and we do have high-quality people working in all of our buildings. If I were to look at some of the issues that I think need attention, um, financial support, obviously. Um, both at the local and the state level. Somehow we have to convince um, the decision makers in the community, in, in, in this case the town council, um, that we need more support. Um, I think, uh, for instance, if our budget were to go to referendum, I don't think we'd have a, a, an issue in the world in getting our budget passed like other communities do. I think we're not doing a good job in communicating with the town council the needs of the schools, and, and that's probably our fault. Um, that we really haven't, or, or maybe it's, it's just the process that's used, but there really is a problem in getting the kind of support that we need um, for our school budgets each year. Another issue that I think needs attention is, is more non-academic student issues. Um, there are things that I know conversations are going on in the schools regarding the culture and the climate in our schools, issues such as respect, how do kids treat each other, and not so much where kids are going to college, but what kinds of individuals are leaving our schools? What kind of people do we have? Um, which I think is, is, is more important than how many kids we get into Ivy League schools. Um, because if they're not good people, then they're not going to be good citizens. And I, I, I don't think we give that the attention it deserves. And we, we spend a lot of time talking about uh, the academic success of our students. I think another issue that I know the school board has struggled with over the years and as we negotiate with teachers, I think we need to define what the term professional means. Um, because we do have a high quality staff and, and, and they all work very hard. Um, but you know, if, it's, it's, if teaching is a profession, what does that mean? What does a teacher's work year look like? Uh, what are the expectations of our teachers, our administrators, and, and, and those people in this district that we consider to be professionals? Um, what is that all about? And do we need to, to redefine that? And, and really have some conversations with teachers and the, and the teachers association about um, what it means to be a professional working in this district and what the expectations are for that. I think we need to focus on, on, on students more. Um, not, that, not that it isn't always on the plate, but we, especially in the past uh, year to year and a half, we've, we've, we've spent a lot of time on issues that really don't impact students. Um, and it just takes a lot of energy. Um, it, it creates great fodder for the press, um, but really doesn't make any difference. Um, we're here for kids, and a lot of the issues that we spend a lot of time debating um, and dialoguing about, if, you, if we could just step back and say, what difference does this make in terms of students and student learning, we might, you might just say, Let's just drop it. It's not, it's not worth the conversation or the time that we're, that we're putting into it. Um, and lastly, I think an issue that needs continued attention is the commitment to the direction. You really need to all agree on what that direction is. And we've had our future direction plan that's led us. 
um, but that commitment has to continue to be not just the school board's commitment, not just the administrators, and not just the staff. It has to be all three. And the more you can get the community, as we have been able to do, and we have some great organizations with the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, I think we need to do a better job of getting a commitment from the town council in supporting the direction of the schools um, and maybe looking to some more joint efforts and maybe a joint finance committee or something to change that process so it's more of a true one-town concept rather than just having the words out there uh, but not really practicing that. Um, that commitment to a direction I think is extremely, extremely important as you look to the future and some difficult times ahead. And just to end, um, the school board is an extremely important piece of the puzzle. In small New England towns like Cape Elizabeth, um, people look to the school board uh, for guidance, they look to the superintendent, they look to their administrators, and they look to their teachers. And the kinds of things that, that I think people are looking for, number one is passion. I think we all need to have a passion for this work, and I think that's why it, 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 it's hard to differentiate. You know, the, what a school, when you get on a school board, you're here for kids. Um, when you become a teacher, you're there because you enjoy that work and hopefully you have a passion for working with kids. Um, you're not punching a clock. You do what you need to do to get the job done. And school board members, I know, feel the same way because you get, we all get very emotional about what we do because we have that passion. And you need to continually go back to that and ask yourself why you're in this business. business. And it's all about kids. And it's about having that passion for the work. Um, and I would say to people, if you don't have that passion for the work, don't be a teacher. Don't be an administrator and don't be on a school board because you really need to have passion to do this job well. Um, the second item would be focus. You really need to maintain a focus uh, to be successful. You have to all be on that same page and, and, and the school board needs to take the lead on that. And lastly, I, I, I would say the important word is, is quality because you can have passion and you can have a focus but if you don't really know what quality is, if you don't know what quality looks like, if you don't know where you want, what you want your standards to be for your student learning, because that's what we're, what we're about, if you don't know what a quality teacher is and how important it is to have quality people in our classrooms, and then you can be as passionate as you want and, and be as focused as you want, but you have to be able to focus and know what you're focusing on. Um, so that's my end of the year annual report. Um, sorry it took so long, but I felt it was important to kind of leave you with, with something to think about. Um, well, thank you. And, and thank you for all of these um, very thoughtful considerations. I know that this has taken you um, a tremendous amount of time to put this together and to put all your thoughts on paper. Um, and now we can move on to the principal's reports. Uh, Tom, you're the first on the list. At the June board meeting for the past few years, we've been asked to kind of reflect on the year and see where each school stands and maybe mark some uh, of our achievements and accomplishments. Uh, first, I want to thank Tom, not just for his hard work for the past five years, but uh, for summarizing like, the state of the district as we are now. I, I'm going to mention some of the things that Pond Cove has done this year, but I think you'll, you'll find a theme. It fits with what Tom has said. Uh, the metaphor I'm going to use is a roller coaster for schools. Uh, we say that a lot, but you have to remember when you uh, are on a roller coaster, the energy you get is on that first trip up the hill. It's all downhill from there. Not to say that we don't have uh, energy uh, produced during the year, but for Pond Cove, it goes back to the summer. Last summer in August, and Tom has referred to the emphasis on professional development through the use of professional development money and flex days. We have started tradition at uh, all the schools, I think, of having teachers meet and focus on very specific needs as they see them for their teaching and instruction. So last year, the themes that emerged at Pond Cove we have been doing everyday math for, what, 12 or 13 years, but the teachers felt it was time to take a look one more time to see how we were doing everyday math. They spent a long time doing it and actually uh, strengthened the cycle they did it with during the year. 
Um, spelling always crops up as an issue in elementary schools. A group of teachers, K through four, met, looked at the research, uh, see, uh, decided how the research met or did not meet the way we were teaching, and they carried that research over throughout the year. We were also very interested in extending and deepening our reading instruction. So as a corollary to the reading people we liked the best, they found us Benel people, published something we really liked in uh, teaching phonics. The teachers got together in August to figure out how to make, how would uh, best use it at Pond Cove. This creates momentum to start the year. Once the year starts, we always say we don't have enough time. But those three projects went on and were successful throughout the year. And it's not just K through four teams. We've had other uh, traditions now be established in the summer. We tried the observational survey of all, in, in, reading assessment for all incoming first graders to do in August. We tried it three or four years ago. It's now become part of the program. The reading data, which is a great little gentle test, is given to the parents, given to the teachers, so we know more or less where the kids are on the first day of school and how best to meet their needs. Uh, we added to that last year through the foundation that literacy camp, really, for first and second graders. Um, that was so successful that it has become part of the budget, and we're going to do that again. That all helps during the year. Um, our pupil services team, or special education team, is always looking for feedback and how to get better, and a lot of it is done subtly without attention to perfect uh, confidentiality. But last year particularly, they were working on communication, communication with the ed techs when the teacher, and they worked really hard, because I know they were doing PAPES at the same time, to come up with packets for the teachers and the ed techs so on the first day of school, we were all on the same page. Uh, that's the kind of momentum I'm talking about. You know, we're at the bottom of the roller coaster now, but in August we go to the top of the hill and start again. Uh, Tom mentioned leadership position. We had a, a very symbolic and actually a real position of the, of the teacher leader. Uh, Kelly Hassan filled that position more than competently this year. But by identifying that position and the board getting behind it, I think it encouraged other teachers to step up and take on more leadership without uh, detracting from their teaching. We had three new teachers become team leaders this year for some reason. Karen Abbott, Sarah Lewis, and Mary Dulac. They not only held their own, but they meshed really well with the veteran teacher leaders, uh, Susie Safer, Amy Kieran, Marie Hayes, and Kelly's a teacher leader, and took on not just team business, but school-wide issues and act as a network for uh, recruiting help and getting and modeling their leadership with other teachers. Another initiative we tried this year, I think you'll recall that we revamped the supervision and evaluation document last year. And that gives continuing contract teachers the opportunity to do what we do with kids, to differentiate their instruction, their goals. The teachers at Pond Cove elected to pursue projects um, with me as the supervisor in collaborative inquiry. For instance, the media center and a fourth grade teacher did a poetry uh, digital photography unit. Uh, a, th a third grade teacher was very interested in the impact of the Founders and Pinnell work, came up with a, an assessment to give in grades two and three, and laboriously went through to score all the all the uh, the spellings the kids did and give them partial credit to see if that um, change in instruction was making a difference. So he did it once in the spring, and uh, so once in the fall, and again in the spring. And we're looking at that data to figure it out. This is all part of supervision evaluation. Uh, other teachers chose a new curriculum material, found us in Pinnell, and said they really wanted to do that and worked with me to do that correctly. And still others said, I want to try a new practice in the classroom. Would you please come in and observe how I'm doing it? So I have to say, from my point of view, the uh, supervision evaluation document not only confirms good teaching, but encourages uh, teacher leadership. Uh, the roller coaster slows down occasionally. We, uh, Tom has mentioned how laborious the uh, local assessment system can be because of the validity requirements in it, but we're doing it. We're making progress. Uh, we're working hard with Sarah to get it done, and uh, I think we're getting on top of the hill. We'll be able to coast pretty soon. Um, the other part we worked on hard for years was, Tom mentioned again, the uh, bond passed. We are delighted to know that next winter the kindergarten will be back at Pond Cove and will be the K through four will be under one roof. As a district, we are committed to attracting and retaining the best teachers. I think the supervision and evaluation document helps retain them. We had an unusual opportunity this year with three retirements. 
we don't usually know that early in the school year uh, that we're going to have to fill vacancies. So once we get over the shock of using, uh, losing veteran teachers, we were able to start our search early this year and use the new procedures and really actively recruit people. Uh, because we had the luxury of time, we were able to visit other schools, see these teachers in action, or invite them to Pond Cove to teach a lesson. It has proved invaluable. I hope we'll be able to continue that again. Uh, in addition, since we're investing time and money in these people, it reminded us of the importance of um, how to help these people once, once they get there. So we are trying to strengthen our induction process for teachers. This is something that Kelly has taken on, and she's attracted the interest of the foundation to help do that. In fact, she already started last week by going to a team and saying, you're going to have some new teammates next year. What can we do to uh, send signals that we're professional and want to keep you? And again, on the energy side, uh, the, the PCPA, again, they always amaze me. They seem to outdo themselves every year with the way they support the teachers and the staff and the administrators at Pond Cove. This year, for example, in the beginning of the year, at their suggestion, we applied to them uh, for financial resources to double um, our mobile lab capacity. And through the PCPA, we will do that quickly and efficiently as being used. And a new jolt of energy this year, and it took um, eight or nine months to get organized through the PCPA, was the Arts Day, which we had a couple of weeks ago. The, the, the labor behind that the adults did was amazing. The kids came to school, and I think everybody, all 650 kids, enjoyed their day. Um, it's, a, you know, it's been a, another year. We're down at the bottom again, but we're already thinking about next year. And I do want to say part of the transition is a changing school board that people are aware of and uh, losing Tom as superintendent. So it's going to be new challenges, but I think we can do it again. Questions? Thanks. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, the high school, Jeff. Claire's whispered instructions as I walked up was short. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that because I know the hour is late. Um, first, I wanted to just add my very brief comments about the departure of Tom and the two school board members who are leaving. Um, Tom's leadership has been consistently inspiring, um, consistently supportive, and all too short, in my opinion. Jennifer, I'll miss your questions, um, making us think about old things in new ways. Um, they're really good questions. Marie, every laptop that walks into the high school next year should have a plaque on it that says <laughs> Legacy of Marie Prager. Um, thank you. It's been a pleasure to work with all three of you. It's a huge pleasure. Um, I mentioned Ray Cooper last time, so I'm not going not gonna to repeat what I said last time, but uh, he will certainly be missed. We've had some events that have happened since the last month, uh, school board meeting, um, Graduation went well. Uh, in, in retrospect, we turned out to be the heroes because we, we made the decision to have a graduation outside. Uh, we could have well been the goats, and we're just thankful that we were not. It went well, um, and I've received a lot of positive comments and thanks from parents who uh, said, glad you took that risk. So that was good and uh, well worth it. Uh, project graduation, uh, Rebecca and Michael mentioned it. I, I went on it, um, and I'm probably blinking at a higher rate of frequency than I, I normally do this time of night, But because uh, I still haven't quite recovered from uh, uh, being with the senior class until 6 o'clock in the morning um, Sunday night. It was a lot of fun. It was truly a lot of fun. There was not a single, a single problem that happened all night. Um, the only decision I had to make, the only thing that I really had to do was to ask the people at Flatbread's Pizza to accelerate the production of cheese pizzas um, and decelerate the production of egg and pepper and sausage pizzas at about 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that was literally the only task. And I was absolutely superfluous that entire evening, uh, which was a great feeling. So it was just fun to, to be with the kids and watching them have fun. I did want to publicly thank Officer Gaspar who once again uh, appeared at, officer, uh, at uh, Project Graduation. His presence is absolutely invaluable. Um, the kids like him, uh, they respect him, uh, and he makes a huge difference. 
STP. Uh, somebody asked, I can't remember about whether the STP presentations were taped. Marie, okay. Um, the presentations to the classes were not all taped, uh, but there will be playing on the local cable, cable TV. I'm not sure what the schedule is going to be. Um, Reed Stevenson, one of our seniors, um, created a video of students out on their STP projects. And I have not seen that uh, because I was doing some other things at the time, but I've heard it's awesome. And it is going to be played on Cape Elizabeth Cable TV. Uh, the students who appear on it have gotten, gotten permission, have given permission for their pictures to be used. So I encourage you to sort of take a look at the schedule of Cable TV and that will be out about STP. I wanted to mention also, uh, just thank Carol Robitelli. Some of you may know her as the Guidance Office Secretary. She is our scheduling guru. Um, in the last three weeks since um, Latin came back in the schedule, which we're all thankful for, um, she has completely redone the school schedule because she's now, she's now do, done two entirely uh, different school schedules for this year uh, because of the reintroduction of that class. And I believe that we will have school schedules for uh, incoming ninth graders when they come on Friday for step up day. And that's because of the Herculean efforts that she has made. I mean, it's just been fabulous. Uh, just a couple of reflections, um, learning results. This year turned out to be a practice run. And I think that will be a good thing. It was a little bit frustrating from time to time. Uh, not to know until literally four weeks ago whether or not the assessments that our kids were taking counted. Um, but I think it will have been a good experience. We've made some mistakes uh, that we hopefully will not repeat next year. Uh, we've learned a lot about keeping things simple. Um, we started off with much more ambitious plans, I think, uh, much more complicated assessments than we could possibly um, uh, use and still keep to the requirements of rel reliability and validity. I'm still a little bit nervous because I understand coming down the pike are some further refinements this summer about what reliability and validity means, uh, but we're hoping that those will not significantly um, push us off in a different direction with our assessments. But it has been a practice year, and, and you know, all in all, I think that's going to be a great thing. Uh, I have to mention the class of 2004 when I talk about my reflections for this year. They were a great class. Um, and uh, the um, class that I think Michael and Rebecca have shown every time they come before the school board is a reflection. Uh, and their comments tonight are a reflection on, on them, but a reflection on also the, uh, the leadership that they really brought to the school. Uh, they, will be, they will be very missed. Um, at some point, uh, when things slow down for the board, perhaps in the fall, um, there are a few things that have gone on in the high school the last couple of years with the school board's report, uh, support um, that I, I think it would, it, if, if there's an interest in time in a school board workshop or something to hear about some of those things. This has been the second year of the uh, transition to a new science sequence. Um, and, and some data is coming in, was coming in last year, and the physics teachers have uh, just generated an end of year assessment again to sort that, that uh, I'm meeting with Michael Efren later this week, and he's going to be sharing with me some of the results of those uh, assessments and the data from what, comparing what the ninth graders have learned, the growth and learning of ninth graders in physics, and the growth and learning in twelfth graders in physics. And Michael has just given me sort of a quick preview of what I'm going to hear. And at some point, I think it would be wonderful for the board to hear from the teacher's viewpoint about how that has been working, the mistakes they've made, and what they've done right, and what they've learned. Um, another one that would be wonderful to hear about is the Maine Learning Results Math Program, which also is, is in existence because of the support of the school board uh, for our most struggling students in math who have been asked to take two simultaneous math classes. Uh, but we can document, um, and Charlotte Hanna and Elaine Brownell would love to bring in some information, some data about uh, the growth in math achievement that our most struggling math students are, are experiencing because of, uh, because of the existence of that class. And I think another one is, and I've mentioned it before, some, at some point is to uh, hear from the foreign language teachers about their by now almost universal, not entirely universal, but almost universal adoption of uh, total physical response storytelling approach to teaching um, introductory, especially Spanish one and two classes. And in some cases, they're, they're have, heading up into level three, and the results that they've had have been dramatic. And the receptivity of students 
to foreign language has been dramatically improved and their ability and their retention of what they're learning and their ability to use what they're learning and not simply regurgitate it on, on end of the unit tests has been remarkable. We've done a lot of work this year on NEASC, obviously, uh, a lot of work on the school mission. Uh, this board is well familiar with that on the school mission. Um, we, and there are some very concrete results coming out of that. On August 11th, 12th and 13th, there will be six straight writing training. Uh, we've adopted a common rubric, or at least the framework for a common rubric to score writing, which is identified as one of the core academic expectations in our mission. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased that there will be a good number of high school teachers and middle school teachers who will be participating in that six straight writing um, uh, training, and I think it's really exciting. Um, next year I see as the year to tackle reading. Um, it's, it's, we weren't quite ready to do that this year. We have an awful lot of learning to do about that. Uh, obviously a lot of work on the building renovation. Uh, it's very, it's, it's exciting work. We're looking forward to it. Um, and we're hot and heavy in the middle of planning for it. So that's my report. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. Nancy? This is really nice. There are these leftover gifts up here. <laughs> I know everyone else was very gracious and didn't mention it, but of course I noticed it right off, so I wanted to bring that up. Um, first, I'd like to start off with a welcome. Mr. Adams, welcome to the school board. Welcome to our meetings. Um, I'd like to invite you, as I invite everybody, to come and visit the middle school anytime. I will tell you a couple of survival tricks. Um, don't try to walk down the hall at 11 o'clock. That's when the 7th and 8th graders are coming to lunch, and um, those hallways merge, and that could be dangerous. And also, at, uh, at 2.20, I don't know why they have other places to go, and especially this time of year, they're pretty quick heading out the door. But um, whether you come before this school year ends or next fall, we are always there. You're certainly welcome, as is any board member. So come on and visit us, or past board members, you know, if you've missed anything um, that you'd like to come. I'd like to share um, just a few thoughts as well, too, about reflections for the year and things that we've done, and I make no promises to be short. First of all, <laughs> I know now people are trembling. Um, <clears throat> first of all, um, another great year with the laptops, and really the laptops as tools, they have served as catalysts for our learning, for our flexibility, for being investigative, for thinking about why do we do the things that we way, the way we do, is there a better way to do that, for teachers becoming facilitators of knowledge and not just the givers of knowledge, for learning how to collaborate with young people and learning together. Our seventh grade team learned that in another layer of depth this year as it was year two for them with the laptops. Our eighth grade team, they all worked together last summer um, as laptop buddies to get ready and the eighth grade team came on and also tried some of those things. They're in a little bit different learning place than the seventh grade, but they're also, they learned um, very quickly from their colleagues. We will continue to do that as we know that we have the laptops for two more years um, and we will continue to learn with them and to use them as tools. But I remind everybody once again, the story isn't about the laptops. The story is about the teaching and the learning. And that's the great story that is being written as we work each day. A couple of great examples about that are um, eighth grade social studies teachers were part of a pilot project in Discover Me, which is, stands for Maine, um, that they went onto the website. Sometimes those things worked fantastically, and they were great um, and exciting learning experiences, and sometimes we had glitches, and, um, but we moved on, and it was a great experience. They took that on. Continuing with the eighth grade team, they also had a wonderful attitude about trying to make the MEA online work. We were not successful in the end with getting a continuous, steady connection for our students, but we are ready to be part of that endeavor for next year where we understand all parts of the MEA will be online. So um, we will be ready, we know our students will be ready, um, and it will be exciting. As we move forward with um, technology as well too, um, last time when I spoke about Bill Jell, uh, Bill Jell, yeah. How about Jill Bell? <laughs> Try that. <laughs> She'll get me for that. This I will never live that down. Um, however, husband's name. <laughs> I, I even know that. I mean, anyway, when I spoke about Jill Bell and all of her work with video conferencing um, that we did, that is also just continues to grow. And added from the last time when I gave you an update, 
uh, as part of that in honoring Jill. Um, this past week, she worked with Carolyn Russ's two social studies classes in the sixth grade, and they made connections with the Holocaust Museum and directly with Holocaust survivors through video conferencing, two different sessions. And part of the whole connection with the Holocaust Museum and being a place that we could work comes from Jill's connection with the people in New York and making that come alive in many, many ways um, for our students. Um, recently, she's also been contacted by Paul Gaspar to come over and look at the equipment to see if there's a way the Cape Elizabeth Police Department could use our video conferencing materials and equipment for staff development for them. So really trying to expand it out and to move forward. As Jill moves off into retirement land, she is going to be working over the next, the coming weeks with Hayden Atwood, who is going to be our coordinator of video conferencing opportunities for next year. So um, it is a wonderful example and something to celebrate as well, too, of not the project isn't just about me, the project just isn't mine, and when I leave, it shall leave, but the project's about the students and about learning and how it will continue even when perhaps the person who brought it to us originally is no longer there. So we celebrate that continuous work. As both Jeff and Tom have mentioned, our assessment work continues. Sarah brings excellent leadership to our group. Um, the teams have worked. They are excited. Well, excited in some part of the definition of the word excited about having um, assessments that they feel they're ready to start using next fall and to explore those. We'll be using some of those late start days as we begin to administer those assessments and we come to score them and to refine them and work with those reliable and the standards of validity as well too. So that we were working on that. This year we had a new trial with officially with an athletic administrator as a stipended position in the middle school and it has worked very well. Uh, we have still a very large percentage of our students who participate in our co-curricular activities as well as our athletic activities and I know the communication between parents and coaches and students and teams and other schools um, has greatly improved and we're just working on that to fine-tune that even more as we move forward with that endeavor. We had a new play director this year with Evan Solander, and that was kind of different for us because ever since we've been in our building, Steve Price had been our play director. Um, prior to that, we didn't have a stage, so it was rather difficult to um, do plays. Actually, we did have a stage in the old gym, but it was like the Valley of the Lost, so you had to be right in the front edge or no one could hear you. So with the new facility in the cafetorium for years, Steve has put on wonderful productions and coordinated with lots of students. He passed that reign to Evan this year, and Evan did a great job with the students in Bye Bye Birdie. Um, next year, we are going to try to do two types of drama experiences, one in the fall that will be a smaller type of experience, and then one, a medium-sized one in the spring. So instead of one gigantic experience, we're going to try to go with small and medium and see if we can get more students involved and encourage more participation in that activity. The Middle School Parents Association, of course, has been another wonderful support system to work with for us. And uh, today at a meeting, I think they were figuring out they have granted about $14,000 worth of teacher grants this year. And one of their guidelines as they do this is how does it impact students, how does it impact all the students in a grade level, and what can we do to make a difference? And they certainly are our valuable partners. As we speak about those kinds of things, I have to also just mention once again the Wonder Years that was successful, its second successful time this year, and we look forward to doing that again in March of 2006, and um, that just continues to grow and be a great endeavor. And I would just remind you of the question that several of our presenters asked. They wondered if our team of parents who organized the Wonder Years, led by Ann Belden, um, if they did that for other communities and were they a company. So um, they did that very successfully, and hopefully those people won't hire them away. Gail Schmader helped us organize once again a successful career day for our 7th and 8th graders in January, and it just helps our students begin to think beyond beyond where they are right now, what are some things I might be interested in, what are some things I've never thought about, but gee, that, that sounds kind of interesting. And it gives a wonderful time for members of our community and surrounding communities, adults to come in and talk about the things that they're passionate about, that they really have found something that they like to do. 
And I think, I, for many reasons, I could stand here and tell you about all the celebrations uh, for the wonderful colleagues I have um, in the middle school, in the professional staff, and in our support staff. But I think I'm going to do that through an example um, instead of just trying to um, give you a lot of fancy words. We do have a problem in the Cape Elizabeth Middle School, and our problem is we are not as kind a place as we would like to be. And that means kind and being courteous, polite, respectful, compassionate, um, all of those things. We are a good place. We are a safe school. There are many schools that when you go out and you read articles on bullying and setting climates, we're at the place they're striving to get to. We are at the place that they think of as the safe harbor. However, once you arrive at that harbor, you need to kind of look around and see, is it really, is it just surface politeness or is it in depth? And we have taken on the task as a staff that we're really going to work at that in-depth relationship building, that in-depth place of respect, of compassion, of kindness, of courtesy, all of those things. It doesn't come with an easy, quick answer. In fact, it doesn't come with a program. You can't go out and buy it and do all the worksheets and then suddenly you've arrived. It's about changing beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. It's about adults modeling behavior, and it's about students buying into it, and it's about all of us holding each other accountable for that. I talked with the Middle School Parents Association about this today, and we realized that even as a society, as a society of the United States of America, we're not that kind of place. If you listen to the news at night and how people interview one another, it is not with a great deal of politeness. So, we're going to buck the wind and see if we can make a difference. Um, they will begin that work on June 16th as we have our Building Flex Day and devoted to relationship building and thinking of things that we can come back and work with with our students. Throughout next year, I'll report to you on this, we will be taking little steps. Sometimes we'll slide back. It won't be immediate. This is a long-term project, um, but we're ready and energized to begin. And I think that speaks to some of the things that Tom was talking about when you have a good system. If you have people who are passionate about what they do, and we have a middle school full of people who are passionate about the needs of emerging adolescents not just their academic needs, but also their emotional and social and physical needs as well. People who can focus, what is it we're trying to change? And then how will we get there? Will it be quality? Is it something we're proud of when we get done? Um, I think they'll do it. As I said, bear with us, but hold us accountable as well too. We should be able to report to you throughout the year, both from the student voices and from things that I say to the school board about how we think we're beginning to make a difference. Um, and that's a big task to go about. And finally, just like to end by saying thank you. Started with a welcome to Mr. Adams to the board. I'd um, like to say thank you to Tom for your years of inspirational leadership. Um, thank you for stopping in for a while. We knew you were a middle school person for two things. First, when you first came here with your family, um, Rick Madden said, I knew this man was a good one when he came in and he introduced himself as the father of Danny and Johnny who are entering our school. He didn't introduce himself as the superintendent. He came as a dad first. That said mounds to us at the middle school, so we thank you for that. And it um, was a pleasure to work with you in that capacity. Then, of course, we had the wonderful opportunity to work with you as a leader as well, too. Um, we know the great things that you've done. We appreciate that. Those things will continue to make a difference for many years to come. One of the best things I think that we did, because it was an example of something that in people in education don't often do, when we set forth with the strategic plan, we actually revisited that plan last August, but we didn't throw it out and start all over again. We did a true revisit and refinement. That is unusual in our profession of education, or at least it's unusual in my a million years in education. Um, so that was exciting to be a part of, and we know we have a focus to move forward with. Marie, thank you for being on the school board um, and coming on. I remember early in your career, you came to talk with me. It was at a time when my professional career, um, the Cape Elizabeth School Board didn't have a particularly high opinion of me, and um, that is a well-known fact. Um, I've survived, though. It's amazing. Uh, but one of the things I thought, oh, maybe there's hope here for the future, 
because one of the things you said to me is, Nancy, you always have some interesting ideas. And I thought, wow, I do? This is great. <laughs> um, somebody who's, who's going to be willing to listen. We can go places. And we have Marie. Thank you. And thank you for turning to us last year with Project Build and to our students and their new laptops and saying, maybe you guys could help us out with this. I know that was a wonderful taste of reality for them. It was special. You believed in them. We think they delivered, um, and they learned greatly, and we just thank you for that. Sometimes people don't often look to the middle school for resources. They look to us for the reasons why things don't work, but not for resources. So thank you for that positive look. Jennifer, I remember working with you early on as we had um, several great discussions about outdoor experience and beach day. Perhaps you remember those days of when those were um, difficult times for us. Um, and certainly you were there and you brought um, a sense of belief in us and energy for us. I have, of course, thoroughly enjoyed serving on the grammar police with you. And um, whenever I see a misplaced comma, I will always think of you. Sometimes I only have to look as far as my own writing to notice that, um, but um, that was certainly great. And I also know you're a great person to hunt for a bargain for where we can get things for really the best price. So uh, we do that. Um, we will have all of those wonderful things. But for all three of you, thank you for your devotion and efforts um, on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth school system, and especially in your belief in middle level education and your support of all of our work. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. And now we can move on to the committee reports. Um, the finance subcommittee, Elaine. Uh, I do have a report. <laughs> so I'm going to um, fill in the details about our meeting on uh, May 19th, which was when the school board finance committee met to finalize the $267,000 in cuts that we needed to make uh, to meet the 5.4% operating increase to our school budget that was charged by the town council. Um, this represented the third round of cuts uh, from the initial, bu uh, initial budget uh, that, that the initial budget underwent since November. The first cut was by the superintendent and our district leadership team. The second cuts represented uh, $408,000 at the request of the school board, and the final cuts of $267,000 were accomplished at this meeting in May. Um, in a nutshell, I just want to share um, with Henry and any other of the public that might not be aware, uh, the board did look to lease a school bus rather than the purchase of one as to maintain the planned replacement schedule of our capital improvements. It was necessary to cut all expenditures for field trips and furniture replacement at all three schools. Cuts were made at the middle school for both banned physical education and computer equipment and supplies. Cuts uh, were made to both professional and technology development to comply with learning results leg legislation at all three schools. There were additional cuts equivalent to eight-tenths of a teacher from the high school along with further cuts from our capital improvement budget uh, and some special education costs that were adjusted as local entitlement monies became available. There were partial cuts that were made to co-curricular theater, speech, music, and debate at the high school. The school board made several decisions regarding some previous proposals. Um, concerned with academic programming cuts, they unanimously voted at this meeting to reinstate a four-tenths Latin position at the high school with the cost coming from the administrative budget uh, at Pond Cove and a salary cut uh, for a technology technician. It was also decided to endorse the district leadership team's request uh, to upgrade a half-time technology position to a full-time position in anticipation of the increased laptop units at the high school and the new administrative software package required by Maine State Learning Results. Lastly, at this meeting, the agreement was made that the athletic budget would need to either go to athletic fees to help sustain the current programming, creating $50,000 in revenue, or we would need to find another $50,000 elsewhere in our budget. Three years ago, the school board studied the impact of participation fees, and although it has been put on the table numerous times, the board had been able to develop a budget without moving in that direction. 
Our athletic director, Keith Weatherby, and the athletic booster committee met this past spring and made the recommendation back to the school board that rather an across the board uh, athletic cut of $50,000, they would recommend participation fees in order to maintain their programming. Um, at our meeting, a 4 to 2 vote supported this recommendation, and with reluctance, the budget was finalized at that time. We had a finance meeting this evening prior to our regular school board meeting where we were signing warrants and approving um, uh, a salary and benefit package for non-classified employees. We had a report from Pauline on the usage of facility rental funds, um, and the board voted to utilize the balance to help pay for custodial work in our schools over the summer that had been cut from our original budget. Uh, there was discussion of a, um, a photocopier lease that we'll be approving later on in this meeting. Um, Pauline did a great job um, taking a look at all the photocopying needs at the schools. It hadn't been looked at in four to five years. Um, we did a bit of uh, collaborative bidding with 12 other school systems, and we were able to realize some savings there and upgrade a lot of the photocopiers and printers from the computer technology budget. Um, and we will be approving, uh, hopefully approving that lease agreement uh, during the course of our meeting also. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. The policy subcommittee, and Our policy committee met on June 1st. And we, um, we began what will probably be a fairly lengthy process of reviewing our entire policy manual, um, using the recommendations and the guidelines for revisions that were provided to us that I've been mentioning by our legal counsel, Drummond Woodson. Uh, the first step that we took in that process was to review the mandatory policies um, and determine which of those we, at this present time, don't have in our policy book. Of the approximately 35 or so mandatory policies, there are only five that are not currently in our book. We looked at, five, at those five, and they are policy ADF, commitment to learning results, policy IHBG, homeschooling, policy ILA, student assessments, that's the local assessment system that pertains to the main learning results. ILD student surveys and JLDBG reintegration of students from juvenile correctional facilities. We reviewed all of those. Um, the samples were provided by Drum and Whitsum um, that they recommended, and we'll be looking at those more closely. We're probably going to be recommending using the samples that are provided, and we'll be. Um, presenting all those five policies for first reading at our first meeting in, in the fall. Um, our work will continue on this book this summer. We're having a meeting on this Thursday morning. Anyone's welcome to attend. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ann. The building committee, Elaine. Uh, yes, the building committee met both on May 13th and May 26th since our last school board meeting. Um, since that time, the bids for the Pond Cove edition were opened on May 18th. Uh, both the school board and the town council uh, have voted to approve the low bidder of Langford and Lowe as the general contractor. All the bids, as Tom has said, were competitive and the contractors were pre-qualified, but state statute requires that school projects go to the lowest bidder regardless of whether it's a local or state money is paying for that project. Uh, this design bid build process is within our planned budget and a letter of intent has gone out and construction work is ready to begin. As many of the school board members are aware and most likely most of the public, the first of several estimates since the original concept design for the high school came in approximately $1.1 million over the voter approved $7.9 million. The building committee has charged HKTA, the architect, to bring this budget down before the project is handed over to our construction manager, Peyton Construction, and they develop the um, um, guaranteed maximum price for us. During the course of these two meetings, and most likely for several more, HKTA will be presenting revised budgets and designs with ad alternate selections for the building committee and or school board consideration down the road. 
after the guaranteed maximum price is set any changes in the scope of the project will come before the building committee for consideration but will need to come back with full rationale and implications to the school board for discussion further work with peyton has occurred as they are developing phasing plans at this time and subcontractor bids that may provide further savings but hkta and peyton will ultimately be responsible for providing us with the renovation of voter approved scope within that 7.9 million dollar budget Construction costs are varying greatly at the moment and have a very direct effect on where we are at the moment in developing estimates and that final price. We are still confident through pay, though that Peyton can give us a guaranteed um, maximum price by midsummer. Meanwhile, certain segments of the project have been separated out of the construction management work and we are gathering bids for that work to begin in August, such as asbestos abatement and roof repair work. The track overlay work has been pulled from the summer work because of the possibility that it might end up as an ad alternate. If we get a bit better handle on the cost soon, there is still the possibility that the building committee could return it to the late summer schedule. Until the building committee has a clearer picture on project costs, it was felt that the hiring of an owner's rep would be on that ad alternate list for consideration over the next month or so. We are estimating a cost of fifty to a hundred thousand dollars depending on our established needs so there will be a building committee discussion at a later date on the school board's request that we consider hiring an owner's rep for the renovation and that's it yeah. okay thank you elaine um, we have one item of unfinished business, which is the approval of a continuing contract nominee, which was passed out this evening um, for the high school Latin teacher. Um, and I'd like to offer the name of uh, Mort Soul, um, which was not in the uh, initial original list uh, due to some of the budget deliberations that were going on at the time. But fortunately, as Jeff has said, we are reinstituting Latin, so I would like to offer Mort Morton Sol High School Latin um, for your consideration, point four position. So can we have a motion, Kevin? I move that we extend continuing contract status to Mort Sol at the high school. Okay, and a second. Uh, Jennifer, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay, and new business um, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to teaching positions for the school year 2004-2005. I mean, I have um, a number of teaching positions, and I um, I think it would be appropriate to take a vote on each each one of these. Um, First nomination is at uh, Cape Elizabeth High School special education teacher, uh, Bridget Riley. And I'm going to do these one at a time. Okay. Uh, a motion for Bridget Riley. Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation. Second. Elaine? Discussion or comments? None. All those in favor? Seven zero. Um, before I continue, just for for um, Henry's benefit, that this is a new process as far as the forms are concerned. If you notice at the bottom of the form, there is a whole hiring procedures manual that that all the administrators follow. So that um, there's a lot of information that goes into this and the whole process that's followed. Uh, so you can rest assured that there's been a, a, a thorough interviewing and screening of all, all candidates. Um, in that vein, I'd like to also uh, nominate Michael uh, Burns, Cape Elizabeth um, Middle School Special Education teacher. Okay, do we have Elaine? Yeah. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for Michael Burns as a special education teacher at the Cape Amid the Middle School. In a second. Um, Jennifer, any discussion or comments? All those in favor? 7-0. I'd also like to nominate Holly Smevod for a .5 uh, position at the Middle School Technology Integrator. Okay, motion for Holly Smevod. 
Kevin? Move to accept the superintendent's recommendation. Second. Kathy? Um, discussion or comments? No. One question. Jennifer? Is, is she keeping the ed tech job too? No. 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 Okay. So that's all. Okay. There's another staff member that's moving into the ed tech position. Okay. All those in favor? Seven zero. And um, candidate, um, I would like to nominate for guidance counselor position at Cape Elizabeth High School, Randy Lapointe. Okay. A motion to accept this nomination for the guidance counselor, Kevin. Move to accept the superintendent's recommendation. A second. Second. Anne. Um, any discussion or comments? All those in favor? 7-0. Also, Cape Elizabeth High School, I'd like to nominate Sean Barrett uh, as a science teacher position. Okay. And a motion to accept the science teacher's position. Kevin? Move to accept the superintendent's recommendation. Uh, second. Second. Anne, all those... Uh, D comments or questions? None. All those in favor? Seven zero. Again, at Cape Elizabeth High School, math teacher, I'd like to recommend uh, for nomination Christopher Hayward. Okay. Um, uh, Elaine? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for Christopher Hayward as a high school math teacher. And a second. Uh, Jennifer, any comments or questions? None. All those in favor? 7-0. And lastly, um, a grade two teacher at Pond Cove School, Talia Edlund. Okay. Do we have a motion for Kevin? Move to accept the superintendent's recommendation. Second. Elaine, any comments or questions? None. All those in favor? 7-0. That's it. Next on our list is consideration of the superintendent's recommendation of athletic fee positions for 2004-2005 um, school year. Okay, and as usually is the case, um, I'd like to, because uh, there are a number of these, read these, um, recommend these as a group unless someone has a has an has an objection um, but our new procedures um, ask us to um, these nominations we would do sometimes in our office meetings so we're trying to do them a bit earlier um, with our new hiring procedures is that okay with everyone to? Um, at the at the middle school eighth grade girls soccer John wise seventh grade uh, boys soccer Terry long and middle school cross country uh, Joe Doan. Uh, returning fall nominations, coaches uh, at the uh, high school. Um, and some of these, and actually the first one is a, is a returning coach but in a new position. Charlie Carroll, uh, varsity boys soccer. Ben Raymond, assistant boys soccer. Mark Tinkham, assistant girls soccer. David Weatherby, boys cross country. Marianne Doss, girls cross country. Aaron Filio, Varsity football, which is a, you have to approve the position, but it's being paid by the boosters. Uh, Paul Jackson, golf. Lori Broadhurst, varsity field hockey. Kate O'Toole, JV, JV field hockey. And Don Burke, freshman boys soccer. A new fall coaching nominations, Andy Rowe, assistant golf. Donald Young, assistant football, which uh, Andy Rowe is a volunteer position. Uh, and Donald Young is paid by the boosters. Tyrone Leslie, assistant football, again paid by the boosters organization. Gary Newell, JV boys soccer. And Dean Brooks, girls varsity soccer, new position. Um, I may have heard this incorrectly, but Mark Tinkham is assistant girls soccer, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Is that what? He works okay. with them, yeah. Okay. Um, and also, um, 
for boys uh, varsity ice hockey uh, at the high school, Jason Tremblay. Um, when there is a, um, a varsity position, we follow a different procedure, and if it's not a returning coach, so there was a committee, and, and that's why you have it on a different form. Um, and varsity girls soccer, which I already read the name, but you have the packet with you, is Dean Brooks, and I think that's the list. Okay. Can we have a motion for the consideration of the superintendent's recommendations for athletic key positions? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for the athletic fee positions as presented. Any second? Elaine? Um, is there any discussion? Questions? None? All those in favor? 7-0. Now, as normally is the case um, with co-curricular positions, as you can see, there are a number, um, especially at at the high school, you've, um, I assume, have, have had a chance to review the list. Uh, many of them are returning. Um, and the only, there is one change um, at Pond Cove. Um, the drama group um, position is, is not on, take that off the list because that was something that was eliminated, if you remember, in our budget deliberations. Not that it might not still happen down the road with the with a booster group or something supporting it, but as of now, it's, it's not on this list, so you can take that off the list. And if I could, I would like to place um, the uh, the stipended positions and the co-curricular positions at the middle school, Pond Clove at the high school, um, before you for, for for you to accept. Do we have a motion to consider the superintendent's recommendations for all co-curricular fee positions? Uh, Kevin. So moved. Uh, and a second? Second. Ann, uh, any comments or questions? None. All those in favor? 7-0. Okay. Next is consideration of a proposal to authorize summer hiring. And normally what happens uh, for the summer um, for, for board members who were not here in the past that over the summer there is some hiring that needs to take place um, in what is the standard procedure in, in, in most communities and any school boards I've been involved with is to authorize a superintendent uh, to conduct summer hiring. Um, is there still is some hiring that has to take place with that text and some of the teaching positions over the summer in the and when you come back in August those names will be presented to the school board it allows us to move quickly over the summer what's a little bit different this year is I know you're in the middle of whether or not there'll be a superintendent so how much of that can be done and whether you'll move to have a, an interim do some of that is yet to be determined but you still have to take the motion to do that whether or not there's someone here or not so, so we would be authorizing summer hiring by the superintendent. By, the superintendent, which by July 1st of this year, it will be you. Well, as of as of the end of this this meeting, because you won't be meeting again. So it's called summer okay. hiring. Now, whether I do it until June 30th, and after that, you'd either have the new superintendent if they're on or board, in the or you might, depending on when that person can get here, you might have to have someone. What other districts have done, they either have a superintendent uh, on an interim basis might come in once a week uh, to sign all necessary forms, um, approve any, any summer hiring that's done, um, but you have to have, no one else can do that. There has to be a superintendent that does that. So, so I, I think if you take the motion, you're, you're approving a, a superintendent to do that. Who it is, you don't know yet, that's all. And it could be one of those three that were just mentioned. Do we have a motion? I move that we authorize a superintendent or interim superintendent, if need be, to do any summer hiring that is deemed necessary. Okay, and a second. Jennifer, uh, any discussion, comments, questions? I would prefer to extend the authorization only to Dr. Forsella through the end of his contract, and if necessary, to meet again and make a decision as to whether or not 
to extend that same privilege to an interim superintendent and or the new superintendent. Okay. Um, would you like to amend the motion or do other people have comments? Can I, can I just say something? I know this is unusual, but um, as a person who will be hiring some people over the time, and I understand the hesitancy because it's sort of like, is it scenario A, B, or C? Um, however, the thing that's at risk, the opportunity cost of this may be that in our effort to attract and retain the most highly qualified people, we will be in competition with other systems for those people. And the more delay we have, and if we can make a decision or not, um, may just, that just may be something we need to accept as a cost or not. That's all I wanted to bring up. What Whatever you deem to do will be fine, but I see that as our opportunity cost. Well, we'd still have, we'd still have the same forms and whatever done during Absolutely. the summer, right? Absolutely. So the fact that it's a sort of, well, it's a legality that a superintendent has to sign that. Right. I mean, it could be Joe Schmo, superintendent. Right. It has to right? be a superintendent. That right. Um, but the committees of people who will be interviewing will be the same. The recommendation right. will come from Forms each administrator the up through the superintendent's office. And I don't have a problem with that. Um, basically, because we have a, a, a new great policy um, or procedure for hiring um, that gets a lot of input and recommendations, and I would be supportive of, of, of putting my... Uh, faith behind what the administrators are recommending to the superintendent or the uh, interim superintendent for the summer. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Um, then we have a motion and a second on the floor, so let's take a vote on the original motion. Um, all of those in favor? Uh, six. All of those opposed? One. So we will be authorizing Tom Frisella by June 30th uh, to do summer hiring or an interim superintendent or the new superintendent. Well, my guess is it's just as the superintendent, right? Yes. Yes. Whoever, yes. Is, right. whoever is in that Right. Whoever I just wanted to clarify that right. it can be any one of those. I don't us. think you'll have more than one at the same time. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, the competitions. Okay. And consideration of the, uh, the business manager's contract. As we discussed, uh, Kevin? I, I move that we extend the contract to the business manager, Paulina Portria, in accordance with the terms and conditions discussed in the executive session. Okay. And is there a second? Second. Henry? Um, discussion, comments, questions? None. All of those in favor? Seven, zero. Next on our list is consideration of the superintendent's per performance incentive. Um, and I feel that there needs to be um, some clarification of the executive session that was held on May 19th after um, our last regular school board meeting to discuss the superintendent's evaluation. For the past four years, Dr. Fursella's contract with the school board has provided a performance incentive. This incentive program was established in the second year of his employment. This incentive is directly related to his performance. Every year at this time, the school board meets to determine whether the goals and objectives established at the beginning of the school year have been met. At our executive session on May 19th, we listened to Dr. Frisella's final presentation of his performance against those goals. Following that presentation, we discussed and agreed that he accomplished the goals we set and he, in, and he deserved the incentive amount. Actually, this incentive plan has been presented at the Maine State School Board's annual conference in Augusta and has been a model for other districts in our state. 
Dr. Frisella and George Ann Twistle presented it to school boards and superintendents across the state and received calls for further information from those who were interested in this model for their own districts. Therefore, since we have agreed that Dr. Frisella has met the goals and objectives set forth for the 2003-2004 school year, I would like to have a motion to award Dr. Frisella the $4,000 performance incentive as is, outlined, as is outlined in his contract. Um, is there a motion? Kevin. Yes, there is a motion with pleasure. Okay. Uh, second. Second. And. Um, any I must abstain from voting because I'm not familiar with it. Okay, thank you, Henry. Um, any comments or questions? Sorry, Kathy? I'm going to abstain as well since I wasn't here at the time that the goals were set. Okay, thank you. Jennifer? Um, I don't think a vote is even necessary um, because the incentive is part of his contract. The contract was voted on um, a year, I can't remember exactly when we voted on it, um, and to me, um, it seems redundant to vote again on something that we voted on a year ago. So I don't know whether I abstain from a vote or whether I just uh, vote against it because I'm not voting against the, um, the performance incentive. What I'm voting, what I would be voting against is the fact that we're voting again on something that we already voted on. We didn't vote on it. We voted on the contract and the contract. performance incentive is part right, of contract. the contract. And, and therefore and essentially yes. we're voting again. I'm, so I'm not sure how but That's the motion, yet you're voting. What would you be voting on is the motion on the floor. Right. But I don't. What I guess I, I'm not voting against the. Ins what I'm voting. Do you understand yes. where my confusion lies? <laughs> you know, and I I agree with Jen. I mean, if you if 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 Dr. Priscilla was being hired for another contract year, we would be voting on his contract currently. Um, and we are, since the incentive was a part of last year's contract, there really isn't necessarily a need for us to do it again. But that being said, there's a motion on the table. And for clarification purposes, I have used this as my comment, but I would vote to support and make the second motion on this um, proposal. Kevin. Just as a point of information and clarification, when this, in, this performance incentive program was adopted, the then sitting board had offered Dr. Fosseller an increase of X percent, which by Dr. Fosseller's voluntary agreement was reduced by approximately half. And that half of what was offered to him in terms of salary increase was put at risk at Dr. Forsella's request. It always was, it always has been, and always will be part of the compensation package, which has been pointed out repeatedly, was approved in public session last June. A contract that was readily available to anyone who requested it. That said, I have to agree that it serves no purpose to continue to debate over whether or not to vote on this at this point in time. I am in favor of voting on the issue, awarding the performance incentive, and referring the contract language to the appropriate parties. Okay. And any other comments? Um, I do agree that there, uh, there is a motion on the table to be voted on. Um, and for all of the reasons that I previously um, uh, talked about, um, we, both Jennifer and Elaine, are, are correct. We have, you know, this is, has been part of Dr. Frisella's uh, contract for the past four years. 
Um, Can I just, oh, okay. Um, I will vote for it as a clarification issue. Um, I think the vote itself is redundant, but since I do believe that he performed satisfactorily what we had put in the performance incentive, then given the way the motion ha has been um, presented, I will vote for the motion because that's okay. where, what I believe should happen. But okay. on principle, I'm <laughs> we shouldn't be voting at all. On it. Okay, okay, and I think we certainly understand this right. and we all agree. Okay. Um, uh, or Kevin, Jennifer, Elaine, and myself all agree. Um, so let, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further comments or questions? Okay, all of those in favor? Uh, five. And two, two abstentions. abstentions. Okay. Um, then we can move on to consideration of a lease for the photocopier, which we reviewed in our finance committee meeting. As, I, as um, Elaine explained, there, there's, um, we have going to enter into a photocopier lease and, and it has to be approved by the school board and it's quite a lengthy motion. Um, so however you want to handle that is, is up to you, but it's, it's something that legally we're required to do. Well, I think we all had an opportunity uh, during finance to question the, the lease and the wording. So I'd like to make a motion that we accept the consideration of the lease uh, for the photocopiers uh, according to the wording as provided by our business manager and our packets. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Anne, uh, comments or questions? None. All the uh, Kathy, I'm sorry. Just wanted to um, make the comment that um, through um, um, Pauline's apparent diligent work, she's appeared to have saved us six thousand six hundred and sixty-seven dollars, plus provided additional copying service for us. Um, so I just wanted to thank her for that work. Okay. Thank you, Pauline. Um, all those in favor. Seven, zero. Next, we move on to consideration of a no negotiated agreement um, with the um, EdTech bargaining units. Kevin. I move that we extend the three-year contract to the uh, EdTech two and three bargaining unit in accordance with the other terms and conditions discussed in executive session. Okay, and a second. Kathy, any comments or I'd like questions? To I'm not familiar with it. Okay, thank you. I'd Kevin. just like to take this opportunity to thank Sally Tamaro and Deb Sampson, as well as Kathy Ray, for making this an extraordinarily easy, record breaking negotiation, which took all of uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Six and one abstention. Okay. Um, next on our list, uh, we had moved uh, reflections from the school board <laughs> to the last thing before we um, request to enter executive session. So I would like to ask the school board if, if I know there there are some people who have prepared statements. If if we can be brief and um, get through them, or do we not need to do I'll this? I, yes? Everyone else? I have a shortened one. Okay. Oh, Kathy. Am I, am I the only one? All right, so, we'll, so we'll leave it up to individual school board members um, who want to share um, their reflections of this past year. Blaine? I just want to take this opportunity to um, not dwell on this past year um, as I as I personally think of it as my the year that my skin became much thicker um, and it was in direct correlation 
to the increased time and challenges and frustrations that I think the whole board encountered this past year. I just want to say that I, I really love working on the school board and I enjoy working together with the administration and the teachers and the community and I really do feel we make a difference for our students. A lot of really wonderful things happened in our school and we've talked a lot about them this evening and so I'm not going to reiterate them. Um, but there are a lot of good things and uh, for that I'm very thankful for the support of everybody as we move forward. I, I'd like to take just a quick moment to um, uh, thank some people. Um, I'd like to thank Tom for the five years uh, he has given his talents, his vision, and really his heart and soul to our school system. He has provided us with leadership and direction that will leave a lasting influence in our school district for all of us. Tom has raised my expectations for what we really are capable of accomplishing and while he leaves the proverbial big shoes to fill for your replacement, I know that they will have a very solid foundation in which to build upon. I'd also like to thank both Marie and Jen at this, their very last school board meeting. Um, you've provided the stability and expertise to our board over the years that have seen through us through superintendent searches, tough budgets, building projects, legislation mandates, and ultimately improvement of our schools. Through it all, I will miss Jen's humor, her legal and grammatical expertise, <laughs> and I say this as a compliment, your critical eye that often alerted the rest of us to those gut feelings or possibilities that we may have overlooked. Marie, I just want to say I know that people don't recognize the amount of time and dedication that you have put into the board's work over the past seven, eight years, somewhere around there. There's been three building committees and two superintendent search committees, laptop committees, along with the multitude of smaller standing board committees, and then finally as the chair for us for the last two years. Um, and it was all done with a real passion and commitment to do the job right. Um, we've all been very fortunate to have all three of you, and as a school board member and a community member, I want you to know that these words fall very sure of the gratitude I have for all the work that you've done. So thank you. Thank you. Kathy, were you going to speak? Very short. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, as it's not been a whole year for me, um, what I wrote was, um, although I've only been on the board since last November, I look back on those months as challenging and memorable. I've consistently looked forward to the presentations made by the high school and middle school student representatives. It reminds me that we all work towards the same goal of providing the best education possible for the children of Cape Elizabeth. I prefer to look forward towards the future. We have many changes and challenges coming on the horizon. A new superintendent, three new school board members, a new wing of the Pond Cove School, and a renovation of the high school. I will continue to do the best job I can to support excellence in education. Thank you. Um, is there Anne? Well, I'd just like to say it's been a very, very interesting and challenging first year for me. But a year ago, I was excited to be sitting up here, and I still am, and I look forward to my two years ahead. Um, when I sat at the graduation on Sunday, it really made it all seem worthwhile. I, I just, I looked at those kids graduating and all their parents and the faculty as they filed in, and. I really felt such a sense of pride in this community that it made this job feel worth it. So thanks. Okay. Kevin, were you going to share anything? Well, I co-opted everybody and did mine early because it seemed to take two tasks for me tonight. Um, so I would just say, um, please view my statement on public TV. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Kevin. And, you know, originally there were four um, significant things that I wanted to mention in terms of reflecting on the past school year. The first was the um, facility project that, that turned into the building project. The second was this past year's budget process, and I will not go into those two issues. But the last two I, I would like to um, talk about for a minute. 
Um, the third um, was the laptops at our middle school that have given our students and teachers a tool in which to teach and learn in a very innovative way. Our students have had instant access to information for research and working within their classrooms. We have found students to be more engaged in their work and we're reaching more of them. This has been a perfect example of preparing our students for their future in college and in the workforce. I would like to thank our 7th and 8th grade teachers, the 7th and 8th grade student I-team, Bev Bisbee, Gary Lenoy, Holly Smivag, and Nancy Hutton for their dedication and support of this initiative. It has been a tremendous learning experience for everyone involved. There is still much uncertainty in the state as to whether this program will continue, and I guess it's... Looks like it's dead. Looks like it's dead right now. I just found that out. Um, however, the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation has awarded our high school a grant for $27,000 to continue the laptop program into the high school, and our school technology budget contains the balance of the money to keep this program going. This is just another example of how important and valued education is to our community. And lastly, before school vacation in February, Dr. Frisella announced he would be leaving our district at the end of the school year. This was an end of a five-year commitment and dedication by a superintendent who has brought so much to our community. We started the superintendent search in March and have been receiving applications and scheduling interviews ever since. The interview committee, which consisted of administrators, teachers, community members, and the school board, narrowed down six semifinalists to three finalists, one each from Maine, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. During the final interview, each candidate spent a day in each of our schools with administrators, teachers, students, and parents. They also met with town council representatives, the town manager, and Dr. Frisella. The two newly elected school board members have also taken part in the final interview process. With feedback from the final interview day to the school board, we have narrowed the field to one candidate. A group of five, Kevin Sweeney, Kathy Ray, Claire Labrie, Jim Walsh, and myself, took a trip to Connecticut for a site visit last week. The school board has put a preliminary offer together, and we are in the process of working out the details with this candidate. We do hope to have a new superintendent soon. And with that, I think this has been a marathon meeting. Um, and, and now we will um, have consideration of the superintendent's request to, ex to enter, yes, I, I remember that, um, to enter executive session to discuss a legal matter. We would like to invite Claire Labrie and following for school board members only um, an update on the superintendent search. Can I just ask a question if I could? Um, do we have confirmation on a meeting for tomorrow at 2 o'clock? Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you, you said that. Yes, there is a meeting, to, an organizational meeting tomorrow for all of the new school board members. Um, and Mary, I have to ask you, is it in the uh, Jordan Conference Room? Yes. Okay, in the Jordan Conference Room, 2 o'clock tomorrow. Two, two. Thank you. Um, so now, can we have a motion to leave public session? Uh, Kevin. I move that we adjourn this meeting and enter executive session as for the purposes described and with the note that we will not return to public session to take, to do any additional business. Okay, thank you. And a second. Uh, Jennifer. Um, all those in favor? Seven zero. Thank you.